Welcome to your daily-ish Islanders prospect update for November 8th. This is a weekend update. Happy Lumberjack Monday. Let's go over everything that happened over the weekend in Islanders prospect land. So let's review every stat line for every prospect that played, amalgamate it into one if they've played more than once, and see what's going on this weekend. Let's start with the players whose stat lines may not inspire much. Uh, so Christian Krieger, minus four, two penalty minutes for MSU over the weekend. Not a whole lot going on there. He plays in their top four. He's a shutdown guy, so you don't expect a lot of production out of him. He still plays his role relatively well. Then you've got Cameron Berg, three shots on goal. That's good. 69% faceoff win percentage for Omaha and Nebraska. Uh, keep in mind, when it comes to college stats, you're not getting a whole lot in terms of information. You get production, shots, plus, minus, and penalty minutes, and maybe face-off data if they're a center. Outside of that, you're not getting anything like time on ice, which helps us establish more for guys like Christian Krieger, for example. Right? Like, you might get a better sense of what he's doing out there or how important he is for his team if you got time on ice. Um, but we don't have that, so we've got to deal with what we've got. Alex Jeffries played one shot on goal. He didn't play the entire weekend, though. When I reached out to Merrimack, there was no comment necessarily in terms of his readiness. And what I mean by that is they didn't really tell me anything. They're just like, hopefully he's there next weekend. So I don't think there's anything serious going on there with him. I'm sure he's going to be back for Merrimack next weekend. Continuing in the college scene, you have Ben Miragis. Miragis? Ben Miragis. There it is. Uh, two shots on goal for Providence. Also didn't play the full weekend, have not heard from Providence yet if there's an injury, so I don't know if there's anything more going on there or if they're just rotating the squad a little bit. Then you have Tristan Lennox playing for Saginaw Spirit, played two games, a back-to-back -back as well, uh, stopped 28 shots, which is great, but that's not a whole lot over two games, uh, with a 750 save percentage. Not great. Then you have Matthias Rayanemi playing for the Laden Pelicans with 16 minutes and 12 seconds worth of ice time. Outside of that, nothing to report. So let's get to the guys who's got a little, maybe a little bit more to report, like production. You have Alexander Ljungkrantz putting up a single solitary assist for the Brunus under-20 squad. Uh, like I mentioned when uh, Dmitry Timoshov made the move to Brunus, I figured that uh, Alexander Ljungkrantz would make a step down and stay more permanently with the U-20 squad. That has been the case. He's been playing on the top line consistently, uh, but not necessarily, I would say, putting up top line production. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Like, he was really good at the U-20 squad last year. Maybe this is just him kind of going, like, I'm kind of done with the U-20 squad. Can I get maybe a permanent move somewhere more than the U-20 level? Next, we have Alexey Malinin, who put up 10 shots on goal and averaged 22 minutes and 10 seconds for JYP's U-20 squad. So he's not playing at the legal level. He's playing at the U-20 level. Uh, but he is standing out. He's playing top pair minutes for JYP, and he's putting up decent amount of production. He's not leading the division or anything of the sorts, but he, again, he is standing out. Um, this is a sixth round pick for the Islanders last year. This is a smooth skating player who is really good in transition. He should have gone, I would say, at worst, third round. The fact that he fell to sixth round is probably going to be a big value pick for the Islanders. Let's get to all the Bridgeport Islander players at once before we get to the final two guys in the prospect pool that I want to save for last. So when you look at the standout players for Bridgeport, who had three games over the weekend, um, here are the names, Holmes from John Doe, Koivula, Jenkins, Golish of Salo, and there's a few names that I want to get to in that mix. And you've got Durando and Otto Koivula. Arnold Durando, one goal, two assists, eight shots on goal. He had a really, really good weekend, and it continues for him. Um, the one thing that he needed to do was be a consistent player, something that Brent Thompson has said repeatedly, not just about Zerando, but specifically about him as well. Uh, his skill alone isn't going to get him to the NHL level. He's a skilled player, but not at the NHL level. His skill alone, again, will not get him to the NHL. He needs to be a consistent and hard worker, and he's doing that now at the, at the AHL level. And not only are the performances good and he stands out, but the production is there as well. Really good showing from Arnaud Zerando so far in this season. Hopefully it doesn't stop. Then you have Otto Koivla, who also is standing out. One goal, three assists, 12 shots on goal over the weekend. Look, he hasn't stopped performing well for the Bridgeport Islanders. Now, is he an NHL player? When you look at the production, you say, well, he's at least a 30-point player at the NHL level. 
why doesn't he get a shot? It's because the role that he'd be asked to play at the NHL isn't going to be the role that he's being that he is playing at the AHL level. He's going to be asked to play a bottom six role, and because of his size, he's going to be asked to be playing a physical role. He isn't there yet. I don't think he's ever going to get there. He needs a shot to play somewhere in the top six, and that's not going to be with the Islanders. The last two guys I want to get to, Alturatu and Williams Fu. Let's start with the last one. Williams Fu, three assists, six shots on goal. He just doesn't stop performing at the QMJHL level. Uh, his production rate is really good. Uh, it, it makes everyone kind of excited for him, and rightfully so, but we have to manage expectations here. This is a kid who's pretty big uh, and is at a lower caliber league. We have to remember that the QMJHL is not one of the top leagues when it comes to junior level hockey. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't have strong players come out of there. Armand Zorando came out of there. Uh, but let's not expect Williams Fool to become this top six goal scoring phenom like An Enders Lee. It's possible, but let's not go in with those expectations. Let's manage them for a bit. Give him some time. He's going to have a really good year this year with the St. John Sea Dogs. And then I expect, and there shouldn't be any other reason why not, that he signs with the Islanders an ELC three years and then plays out at least two of those at the AHL level. And then we'll see what happens from there. But manage expectations with Williams full. And last but not least, Aturatu. One goal, three shots on goal, 17 minutes and 17 seconds worth of ice time in the one game for Ukrit. And, um... He just continues to, like, to just enjoy his time. He's really, really enjoying that time. And why not, right? The production is there. He's putting up two goals per, sorry, two points per game at the Liga level for Jukurit. Um, This is exactly what he needed. This is exactly what every Islanders fan wanted. And as it stands now, Aturatu is shooting up the Islanders prospect depth chart. Aturatu is thriving in Jukurit. And long may continue until the end of the year where he gets to go to the AHL. Thank you very much. That's your weekend update for the Islanders prospect pool. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. It helps me grow the channel. And if you have, thank you, thank you, thank you.